Dear students, we had started with the solid state reactions in our previous lecture. The aspects that we have covered in that are the general principles, fundamental information on solid state reactions, how they proceed, and what are the reaction conditions, the structural considerations, and other related aspects. And we had, I mentioned to you that an example of converting MgO by reacting with alumina Al2O3 into a spinel MgAl2O4. And therefore, we had seen the uh, reactions involved, how this reaction is proceeds, and this is one of the best examples of standard ceramic route that we normally follow for solid state reaction. So we had reached our stage wherein we had studied up to structural considerations uh, involved in MgO and Al2O3. Now from here onward we shall proceed with the help of this diagram which depicts the basic flow sheet, how the reaction proceeds and further details. Gentlemen, look at this diagram. This is a very, very explicit diagram that tells you the complete details of the reaction that is taking place between MgO and Elmina. It also will figure you later why such reactions are difficult. Now if you look at this diagram, this diagram is in three parts, A, B and C. A part is when the two reactants MgO and Al2O3, they are placed in contact with each other. And therefore, you have in that, in the first part, the interface between MgO and Al2O3. When the reactants, after they have been <coughs> grinded, weighed, dried, they are put for the reactions. Now, when this mixture is placed in the reactors, temperature is raised and the reaction starts. The part B is is the diagram that tells you the situation of the reaction which has taken place after a certain number of hours at a temperature of around 1500 degrees centigrade. Now what do you see in this? That the interface that was existing in the original diagram is now shifted towards both the right hand side and left hand side. The interface shifting on the left hand side is smaller interface shifting on the right hand side is much bigger. That means the formation of MgAl2O4 is taking place on both the sides, but the rate of its formation on two sides is different. We shall, I shall explain to you later why this, uh, this difference, why the, on one side it is proceeding fast and why on the other side it is proceeding slow. The lower part of the diagram is to show you the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. We shall explain to you this later. Now, this diagram is based on the formation of a spindle from nickel oxide and alumina. So therefore, the spindle in this particular case was NiAl2O4. This particular reaction has been carried out in the laboratories and all the parameters that are shown here, they have been fully validated through this and that's why this has been taken as example the reaction of MgO and Al2 follow the complete symmetry or uh, complete similarity with this formation of spindle of Ni Al2O4. Now continuing with that if you look at this slide what happens in this slide is that consider the reaction of the two crystals you have placed MgO and Al2O3 face to face and they are in contact across the sheared face which you have seen in the part one of the diagram. After a certain number of hours when they are heated 
under the heat treatment, the crystals have particularly reacted and layer of MgAl2O4 at the interfaces is formed on both the sides. Now what happens in this layer? You have seen that, that first stage the reaction is formation of MgAl2O4 nuclei they react with each other and this is this stage or this formation is difficult why is it difficult there are two reasons particularly for this first of all the two reactants MgO and Al2O3 there are differences in their structures and therefore they are also differences with the structure of the product that is the first difference then in order to reaction to take place this requires a lot of structural reorganization before the product is formed which means certain bonds have to be broken and certain bonds have to be reformed and atoms must migrate to a considerable distance and measured on the nuclear scale in order to react to make MgAl2O4 so therefore, that is the first thing that how the nuclear reaction is proceeding. Continuing with the second slide and this, the ions involved in these reactions are Mg2 plus from in MgO and Al3 plus in Al2O3. They are, these ions are normally trapped in their crystal lattice. And therefore, in order to react this, they need to hop into the adjacent sites and diffuse through the crystal. So therefore, first of all, these ions must be free to migrate and then they should be able to leave their lattice and then react and that's what is shown in the second step. This can only happen when the temperatures are high and this high temperature provides the thermal energy to enable them to jump out of their crystal lattice and diffuse through the crystal. In summary, if you look at it, the nucleation of MgAl2O4 probably involves the reorganization of oxide ions at the site of potential nucleus together with the interchange of magnesium and albina ions across the interface between the two crystals. That's how it leads to the formation of MgAl2O4. That's what we are calling as a spindle. Nucleation and product growth. Now, as seen in the earlier in the reaction, nucleation process is, is difficult. So the growth, when nucleation itself is difficult, so the growth of the two layers is also difficult. But it does happen. Now let us see how does it grows, how this layer of products grows. Now this grows through a counter diffusion of magnesium and aluminum ions. And this counter diffusion must occur right through the spindle, existing spindle which is formed at, this, at the interface of the two reactants that is MgAl2O4. Look at the figure number 2 where I have said earlier on the right hand side the layer is larger on the left hand side layer is these are the two now what is happening is the interface between the reactant is shifting one is moving towards the albina side one is moving towards the uh, uh, magnesium side so that's why you'll find that they, these ions have to diffuse through these layers of the spindle in order to react at the interface now as there are two reaction interfaces which are shown in the diagram between magnesium and aluminium and that is between spinel and the almina and spinel and the MgO. So therefore ions must diffuse and since diffusion of ion is the rate determining step to and from, to and fro from these interfaces reaction proceeds at a very slow rate even at high temperature at a decreasing rate as the spinel layer gets thicker and bigger. So therefore, it's through the in ion diffusion that is taking place through this layer and this is the rate determining step and that's why it, it is the slowest that one see in this particular case. 
Moving on to the formation of a MgAl2 in nutshell, that is now whatever we have seen so far. If we put in this in, in the form of summary, what you see is that MgO plus Almina they react together to form a spinel called MgAl2O4. Reaction only occurs at contact points between grains of MgO and Al2O4. Gets nucleation near contact point and then grows in growth into the product. This growth requires diffusion of magnesium and linen fines through the product layer, which is itself is a very slow process and that's why this reaction takes a very long time. That was the formation of MgO, MgL2. Now looking at the nucleation, which is the main thing through which this reaction takes place. Nucleation of the desired phase is a key step. For MgAl2O4 reaction, the reactants and products of all have structural base on close packed oxides. Then as the latest, con latest con constants of the reactants and products are not dissimilar, you can get the nucleation on surface of the reactants. This leads to the epitaxial growth that is Product orientation is defined by the substrate it's growing off. That is how it is proceeding from the interface which is continuously moving on both sides of the uh, picture you have seen. So therefore it is this nucleation that determines the growth of the layer. Moving next, that was the thing. Now moving to the little bit of how this reaction, what is the type of the reaction rate in terms of uh, kinetics. Now based on the study as I mentioned to you earlier of NiO and aluminum oxide to form NiAl2O4 spinel it has been shown that interdiffusion of cations through the spinel product is the rate controlling step. That is very important. This reaction as I mentioned to you earlier, it has been performed in the laboratories and it has been observed, experimentally verified that this follows this particular steps and this is the way the reactions proceed. In the case of latest diffusion as is the case in this case also, through a planar layer the diffusion is governed by a parabolic rate law of the type shown in the equation below dx by dt is equal to k into x to the power minus 1 or x is equal to k dash t to the power raised to the power t by 2. What is What does it mean? What does it indicate? x is the amount of reaction equal to the thickness of the forming layer or growing layer. t is the time and k and k dash are the rate constants of Ni Al2O spinel formation. This reaction fits well with the reaction that we have just discussed MgO plus Al2O3. This is the diagram that has been shown to you. You once again have a look at it. You have started with the interface of the two reactants. After a certain time the two reactants have moved on both the side, right hand side and left hand side. Left hand side little less towards MgO, right hand side is more. Now and the bottom is your, as I mentioned to you earlier, is the effect of temperature on the reaction. Now how do we compute these reaction rates? We compute these reaction rates by, increase, by measuring the thickness x of the spinel product layer in the figure that we have seen are just in the and x2 that is the thickness of the layer x square is plotted against the temperature and when you plot this in this part c of the diagram you will find that you always have a straight line 1200 degree centigrade 1300 degree centigrade and 1500 degree centigrade all have 
all are in the form of straight line. They indicate the effect of temperature. The reaction becomes faster and faster as the temperature is raised from 1200 to 1500 degree centigrade. As seen, the reaction occurs much more quickly with increasing temperature as we expected it. And for such reaction, the activation energy could also be obtained from an Arrhenius plot, which is a famous plot for determining the activation energy of any reaction, plotting log k versus t to the power minus 1. That's how we compute the use, make use of this particular figure to compute the uh, Arrhenius plot or to make, uh, to get the energy of activation for this reaction. Now, when such a reaction takes place, through the diffusion of magnesium aluminum ions through the product layer followed by further reaction at the two product interfaces such mechanisms are known as Wegener reaction mechanism. I repeat when a reaction takes place through the diffusion of magnesium and aluminum ions through the product layer followed by further reaction at the two interfaces of the products. Such mechanisms are known as Wegener reaction mechanism. This is a very important and he is the one, Wegener is the scientist who has given all these mechanisms for, for the formation of such spindles. The second case is in order to maintain a charge balance. Now I am going to explain why there was the difference of the layer, one side small and the other side the layer was uh, bigger. Now for this purpose you have to look at the second sentence that is there in order to maintain the charge balance for every three magnesium ions which diffuses to the right hand side interface, interface two aluminum ions must diffuse to the right hand side. So therefore, it is the migration or it is the diffusion of the two types of ion into, through the each interface that determines which particular reaction is fast, which particular reaction side is slow. On the formation side, MGF formation side is faster, on the other side is slower. That's why you have this. The reaction that occurs at the two interfaces may be written idly. Now, let us see the reaction that, is, that we are uh, having. Now there are three equations if you look at this reaction. First reaction, first as the interface which is between MgO and MgAl2O4 where the aluminium and magnesium are migrating to form MgAl2O4. The second interface is between MgO and Al2O3 where magnesium and aluminum ions are reacting with alumina to form. In the first case, they were reacting with MgO. In the second case, they are reacting with Al2O3 and therefore both are leading to the formation of MgAl2O4. Now, if you look at the two reactions, you find when MgO reacts with Al2O3, it gives only one mole of MgAl2O4. When MgO reacts with Al2, 3 and the second, when Alvina is the main reactant, then you have three moles of MgO. So that's why it is 1 is to 3 ratio on the two sides. That's why you see a smaller growth of layer in, uh, on the left hand side and a larger growth of layer on the right hand side. The overall reaction, if you look at it, 4 MgO plus 4 Al2, 3 equals to, uh, equals to 3 mg Al2 approach that is the overall reaction that is taking place. So therefore if you look at it this reaction that explains how the two thickness of the two layers are different on the two sides of the uh, interface diagram that you have seen in this. Now what are the factors let us move. What are the factors that influence in the solid state reaction? This is almost the last slide on this particular case. The th there are three, four factors that emerges that influence the re reaction most in the case of solid state reactions. These are area of contact between the reacting solids and hence the surface areas. The second, rate of nucleation of product phase. 
and the third is rate of diffusion of ions through the various phases especially through the product phase. In order to make the reaction fast to reduce the time we have to maximize these factors and this maximization of these factors starts with the for, starts with the reactants and when we convert them into very fine powder to increase the surface area and also when we increase the temperatures. So that's how the this reaction gets completed and leads to the formation of spinel MgAl24. Now you are also expected to study the kinetics of solid state reactions. Now study of solid state, kinetics of solid state reactions is a little difficult thing. It does not exactly follow the kinetics with which you are familiar, which you normally study with the gas phase reactions. Now in the case as we have seen in the reaction that we have studied, is consideration of such a kinetics data is rather difficult. Why? In heterogeneous reactions between the two solids, reactions to form product occurs at the interface. That is the first thing. Now in kinetics of the re reaction rates, it is important to know which, one, which is the one of the reactions the slowest and that is becomes the rate determining step in the reaction. Now in case of solid state reaction, there are three such possibilities which exist and which one becomes a rate determining is the one that is to be seen. Now what are those three state possibilities? One is the transfer of the matter to the reaction interface. How the material like MgO or Al203 they are being transferred at the interface. The number two, how they are reacting at the interface. And then third is transfer of matter away from the reaction phase. That is as soon as the product is formed, how it's moving away from the reaction phase. So these are the three possibilities which all of them could be one of the, one of them could be, uh, all of them could be a slowest and therefore become the rate determining step. So in view of this, hence the approach is used in the analysis of rate data at, are different from those that we use in the gas phase reactions where the concept of reaction order is very useful. You are all familiar that we categorize the reaction, or, uh, reaction, this is first order reaction, second order reaction, third order reaction, so on. But that is not truly valid in this particular case. In this case, the rate of change of concentration of C of one of the species depends on the nth power of the concentration shown by the equation dct dc by dt is equal to minus kcn. Now what does it indicate? Where n is the reaction order and k is the constant and c is the concentration. From the value of the now from the value of n in this particular reaction, we can get important insight into the reaction mechanism. Maybe such as number of molecules involved in a particular reaction. So, now order of reaction was telling about the molecules that number of molecules that take place, uh, that take part in the reaction. In this case, we use N as the factor about, from which we can have some important insight into the reaction mechanism. For solid state reaction, it is difficult rather incorrect and misleading to think the order of reaction. As the reaction involved, do not involve molecules. So what then we do? The data may be represented empirically as discussed above and it is found that N in this particular case is not a simple integer or a whole number as we have seen in the case of order of reaction and this n may be fractional. So therefore we use nth power of the reactant to know about the reaction mechanism. So that was up to the kinetics of this reaction. Now what are the experimental procedures used 
in such solid state reactions. Now these experimental procedures are meant to tell you where do we start, how do we prepare the reactants, how do we mix them and that what type of heat treatment is given and when how the product is analyzed. So the next few slides they will deal with the experimental procedure which is basis spindle formation from MgO and AlTO3 reaction. The first thing in this case is the reactants. Now in the case of reactant if you uh, rather re reagents if you look at it thus reagents that we have to use for this they need they need to be thoroughly dried prior, prior to weighing. Now all reactions have to be quantitative as I said earlier they have to be in stoichiometric ratios so therefore the all reagents have to be thoroughly dried prior to weighing particularly the MGO because MGO is hygroscopic in nature and therefore the water present in the MGO molecule need to be removed by heating it to about 200 to 800 degrees centigrade for a few hours. So that is the first thing. The reagents need to be dried before they are weighed. Second thing, fine grain materials to be used in order to maintain and maximize surface area hence the reaction rate. That we have seen why you have seen there that uh, the reaction is dependent on the surface area so therefore the material need to be used in such a manner that the maximum surface area is exposed for the reaction. Now if this is not the condition the MGO because of being its hygroscopic it could be used in the form of magnesium carbonate as a source of MGO because this material is less hygroscopic and this material on decomposition yields MGO at about 600 to 800 degrees centigrade with highly, with highly increased surface area and reactivity. So therefore this is an alternative for directly using MGO instead of that you can take MgCO3 which you can place in the reactor initially it will get decomposed and in C2 generate MgO at a temperature of about 600 to 800 degrees centigrade which will have a higher surface area and a reactivity. Similarly in the case of alumina you can use aluminum hydroxide uh, to prepare in C2 the Al2O3. In both the cases the water content should be quantitatively known and there is no requirement of separate heating step in such cases. That means even if they contain some water, this water will automatically prior to reaction will get removed up to a temperature of about 800 degrees centigrade. Moving further continuing with this, next is the mixing. First was the reagents we have seen they need to be dried, they need to be something then comes the mixing. Now weight and dried reagents or reactants need to be mixed together. Now this could reaction could be in a smaller scale and reaction could be in a larger scale. When the quantities involved are less than 20 grams that means you are doing work only in the laboratories. Now this may be done by mixing through done with an agate mortar and pestle, the non, normally the one that you use in your kitchens. The two reactants could be mixed together thoroughly through a mortar that normally one is knowledgeable and one known to be using it in the normal kitchens. Now why agate is used? It is, because, it is preferred because it is made of proceline, it is hard with a smooth and non-porous surface little or no chance of contamination and easy to clean. That's why we use the porcelain agates. Then homogenization of mixture with the addition of mixture with volatile acetone or alcohol to form paste. That means when you wish to make the very homogeneous mixture you can make use of organic liquids like acetone and alcohol 
put this the, the two the mixture in this uh, with this solvent solid in, uh, solvent being volatile it will evaporate and therefore will give you a thorough homogenization of the mixture then homogenization mixture with the help of this acetone and alcohol then during the process of grinding and mixing organic liquids gradually evaporates in about 10 to 15 minutes and you get a very fine homogenized mixture with the two reactants when you use such liquids the important that you think that you have to do is not to use too much quantities of both alcohol or acetone because that will take much larger time to dry up for much larger quantities what happens when the reaction mixture is more than 20 grams this can be achieved in batches or employ mechanical mixing using a bill mo ball mill and mat may take several hours so therefore when your batch is large particularly when the industries are involved in making these products therefore you have to use mechanical means and those mechanical means are ball mills and such mixing requires number of hours to get you the very homogenized mixture so that was about the mixing you have seen about the reagents now what are the container materials which are the vessel that you are going to use to withstand the temperatures that you are looking for in your systems because you are working at a very high temperature so therefore the materials with which these react these containers are formed they need certain considerations so therefore container material to reactant under heating conditions must be chemically inert that means it must not react with any of the chemicals that you are reagents that you are using for the purpose now for this purpose normally noble metals like platinum and gold are usually stable please note platinum and gold are usually stable but they are expensive platinum is preferred over gold due to high temperature due to its high melting temperature and what are those temperatures which is around 1700 degree centigrade the gold melts at about 1000 degree centigrade considerably the platinum is considerably harder and therefore we prefer platinum the other alternative is sometime an alloy of gold and platinum is used for instead of using gold alone now the what's what's uh, what is the form of the react um, container that you normally use normally containers may be a crucible or a boat shaped made from a foil now foil is a very thin sheet therefore you have to be very careful on this crucible may be usable many times whereas foil boats they can only be used once or twice because they are very thin for low temperature reactions other metals may be used like nickel at the temperature about 6 to 700 degrees centigrade but mostly crucible made of alumina and others may also be used so those are the type of container materials that we use keep in with view the temperature that you have and the melting point of the uh, um, material that is being used for making crucible or boat shaped structures now the heat treatment how do we bring about the temperature rise that we are looking for now heat program is a function of form and reactivity of the reactants well, how the heating has to be programmed we look at the the nature of the reactivity of the reactants in the case of mgo and al2o3 both are inert refractive materials and therefore they do not react at ordinary temperatures particularly below 12 to 13 and centigrade hence directly we can use them in a furnace 
we could use a furnace to heat at a temperature of 14 to 1600 degree centigrade. If, as I mentioned earlier, if source of MgO is your magnesium carbonate is used in this, the first stage of reaction must be for the decomposition that ensures the magnesium carbonate decomposition is complete to give you the MgO. If this stage is omitted, that means if we directly heat at a very high temperature, then the reaction will be very vigorous and that may cause a sample to froth or spit out of the container. So therefore, if you use MgCO3, you have to use it in two stages. First convert MgCO3 into MgO and then raise the temperature. Similar is with the Al2 when you use aluminium in the form of aluminium hydroxide. So therefore you have to first stage for their decomposition and second stage for their reactions. Then reactions to give final product requires several hours or days depending upon reaction temperature that you have. Then reactions are often greatly felicitated by cooling and grinding samples. What does it mean? That we do not continue reaction for number of days together even if they are slow. What we do is we conduct the reaction for a few days, make the product, take back the reactants, grind them again and put back into the reactor. Now this grinding is done in order to open fresh surfaces so as to increase the surface area of the mixture so that the reaction can move little faster and therefore as I said the effect of grinding is to maintain high surface area as well as to bring fresh surface into the contact. That is the purpose of this. Then reaction may be speeded up by pelletizing the materials or samples prior to heating. That enables you to increase the contact between the grains. Rise, raise as high as possible the temperature is another way to speed up the reaction. In case of present reaction, we may nearly go up to 2000 degrees centigrade. In many other systems, additional problems may occur. What are those problems? That some of the components may be volatile, as in the case of alkyl oxides. And therefore, such materials, they need extra care. And because that makes the diffusion difficult and ensures that maintenance of oxidation state, oxidation state of the reactant is maintained. So that's very important that conditions are also need to ensure maintenance of the oxidation state of the reacting components like iron 2. Now once you have done these reactions, how do we follow up that your product is formed, your product is, reaction is complete and you are moving in a right direction. So therefore for that the analysis is very important once the product is formed. So solid state reactions, products usually in the form of powder are sintered polycrystalline pieces. What do we do with this? We normally use X-ray powder diffraction is used to establish the nature of the crystalline phase present and it fingerprints the identity of the reaction. It gives you what is happening, tells you what is happening in the reaction. For example, it serves to indicate if the reaction is complete and there are no side products are being formed or if there are any intermediate products are being formed. So the X-ray crystallography will enable you to know how is your reaction proceeding. Is it free from some side reactions? Is there any intermediate products have been formed? That is, will be indicated this. Now, this particular technique of X-ray diffraction does not give you the chemical analysis of the product. Therefore, you cannot know the contaminants. Hence, in the case of doubt, additional analytical techniques may be used in order to determine the overall composition of the reactants. Now you have seen earlier that what were the factors responsible for uh, making these reactions difficult. In addition to those factors, 
some other factors may like this one or two which makes the reaction such solid state reactions difficult one is a spinal product exhibit composition in homogeneity and therefore compositional changes the two phases may not move at the relative rate as we have seen in the ratio of 1 is 2 3 now i must mention here that 1 is to 3 the ratio that you obtain in the reaction the 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 x uh, the layer formation in actual experience this has been found to be 1 is to 2.7 which is very close to 1 is to 3 so therefore all our efforts confirm that we are proceeding in the right direction and the ratios that we are using they are correct then the third thing is second thing is that at the later stage of reaction particularly during cooling crystal spinal products break away from the MGO parent crystal that means they move away due to the volume difference in the two phases this makes diffusion rates and the crystal orientation effects difficult this causes another problem or makes the additional complications in this and the third is when the reactant crystals are not are not in good contact there is evidence to show that an additional mass transfer mechanism is involved we do not want such a things to happen so therefore this is particularly true when the gases are involved in the reaction so these are the three additional factors that make such reactions more difficult to happen now last aspect of this solid state reaction you can use co-precipitation as a precursor solid state reaction in fact co-precipitation this particular step is nothing but to prepare a more homogeneous reaction mixture with a lot of intermediate intimate contact so that the reaction can move fast and can be completed in a shorter time so this co-precipitation is a method that one uh, follows and it has been reported very successfully in the in the books that such a procedure is very useful what is this method now in the case of normal solids the reactants are mixed together manually or mechanically as you have seen and subsequent reaction depends on large to a large extent on the particle size degree of homogenization on mixing intimacy of contacts between the grains and the effect of temperature this is what we have seen so far now in order to overcome such difficulties in order to improve on this to achieve high degree of homogenization together with small particle size and thereby speed up the reaction co-precipitation methods may be used the illustration of this is the synthesis of zinc iron spinel zn fe fe2 o4 spinel this is one of the examples which has been prepared through this particular uh, route it what when what we can do the oxalate of zinc and iron are used as reactants there we are using oxides now here we are using oxalates and by oxalate we mean they can easily be decomposed and therefore the oxalates are taken they are dissolved in the ratio of 1 is to 1 then solution thus made is mixed and heated to evaporate water oxalate of zinc and iron are gradually precipitated together once you have made the solution you have removed the water and therefore the oxalate of zinc and iron they precipitate together the resulting the fine powder and this becomes a solid solution what happens then next this solution contains the cations mixed together essentially on atomic scale the precipitated solids are filtered off and calcined in the usual way now you see the you have done the precipitation you have filtered it off you have made the very, very fine mixture now after filtration you calcined it 
Calcine means you heat it so that it becomes a very fine mass. Now, because of very high degree of homogenization, which you have achieved through this process of co-precipitation, the reaction temperatures are much lower and are sufficient, they give sufficient time to occur around 1000 degrees degree centigrade for the formation of zinc iron spindle. Now imagine you are already working at about 15 to 2000 degrees centigrade. Through this precipitation method, you have been able to make a very fine solid reactant mixture, a very homogeneous mixture, and therefore you are able to do a reaction at a, very low, at a much lower time. The overall reaction is zinc oxalate plus iron oxalate gives you your product. Uh, spinel, zinc spinel plus carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. These are the two gases that gets invo evolved during the process of heating. Method has been successfully used for the preparation of other spinels like that of cobalt and that of nickel as well. There are disadvantages of this particular method. Although everything looks very nice, but no method is free from such disadvantages. What is that? Two reactants have a very when the two reactants have a very dissimilar solution or solubilities in water, this reaction, this particular approach is not useful because they won't precipitate at the same rate or where supersaturated solution commonly occurs when you make mix such solutions. So for such reactions, this is a disadvantage. Finally, no not suitable for highly pure, accurately stoichiometric phases. So therefore, although the approach is very good, but has, has certain limitation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. This completes the solid state reaction.